Greetings, lovers of lore. This is your host, Vicious Venus, and welcome back to the newest installment of the Whimsical Whispers podcast. I am so terribly sorry about the late episode, but this Saturday, the schedule should go back to normal. So technically, you will be getting two episodes this week, one today and one on Saturday. So, on this channel, we like to talk about all kinds of stories, but I have realized that we haven't talked about any TV shows, so in today's episode, I would like to change that. Today, we will be talking about The Owl House, created by Dana Terrace. Keep in mind that there will be quite a few spoilers, so if you are interested in watching the show, I suggest you do that first. I highly recommend this show for people who like magic, wholesomeness, light comedy, and goofy characters, because this show has all of that and so, so much more. The Owl House is a show about Luz Noceda, a young teenage girl who is accidentally transported to the chaotic and magical world called the Boiling Isles. It is in this wacky world that she encounters Ida the Owl Lady and her companion, King the King of Demons. Luce then begins her journey to learn magic while making friends and avoiding dangerous enemies. The show is lighthearted and very enjoyable, so if you haven't considered watching it yet, you should most definitely do so. Now, I have seen many people talk about the characters in The Owl House, however, I want to take a different approach. I want to talk about the world building and the cleverly written setting that is presented to us in the show. The world building in The Owl House is simply beautiful and they create such a logical and realistic setting despite it being a simple kids show and I really just want to talk about it and appreciate how it was just so cleverly written. And without further ado, let us just jump into this topic. So my first point that I would like to discuss is how the Boiling Isles takes fantasy cliches and just straight up makes fun of them. When Luz travels to the Boiling Isles, it is unlike any other fantasy world that she has read about. It's chaotic, full of monsters, terrifying, and there are demons just around the corner. And overall, it's nothing that she was expecting. The Boiling Isles really isn't like any other fantasy universe that we have read before. There are several occurrences in the show where the characters poke fun at popular fantasy worlds that we may all know about. For example, in episode 7, in episode 17, excuse me, Wing It Like Witches, Luce points out the flaws in the popular Harry Potter sport Quidditch. Luce essentially points out that if catching the golden snitch is all that matters, there is no point for the other gameplay. It's never directed towards the Harry Potter series, rather it's stated more like a reference, which is something that I really find hilarious. They also take the extremely popular Chosen One cliche and just straight up demolish it. In episode 2, which is before Wizards, The entire episode revolves around how Luce meets this wizard who tells her that she is a chosen one and that she has to retrieve a staff from this mystical lake and once she does does so, she will free the boiling isles from all their pain and misery and basically save everyone and give everyone eternal happiness and all of that sort of stuff. And now, I'm pretty sure we've heard this kind of thing before, it's such a popular cliche in adventure stories. The protagonist is someone who is chosen, someone who is special, unordinary, different from all the other characters, and they are chosen to um, fulfill a specific task. However, it is later on revealed that the wizard was actually just a demon that was manipulating her into being tricked by this delusion 
and I guess he was going to eat her or turn her into a slave or something. I am sorry, I forgot. It's been a while since I watched the episode. But the point is, he was not a wizard, he was just some demon with incredibly malicious intents. Intentions. Now, I really did enjoy this episode, as sad it was, because it did poke fun at such a popular trope that I have seen so many times throughout fantasy stories. There's always something special about the protagonist, which is why they are able to do the things that they do. And sometimes that that specialty, that unordinariness about them is just so cliche. And I just love how the Owl House takes this popular cliche and just straight up makes fun of it. And this is something I really do appreciate. Another thing that I would like to point out, which is just something that I've noticed, is that the problems the Boiling Isles have are actual problems. (laughs) I know it might take me some time to elaborate, but I don't know if it's just me, but whenever I'm reading about a fantasy universe or some fantasy dimension with magic and all that kind of stuff, essentially this is a whole other world and obviously different societies different communities are going to have problems right they're going to have problems they're gonna have situations they're gonna have downsides to living there however when i'm reading about these kinds of fantasy worlds and other books other stories or watching them on a tv screen I never see actual problems. Whatever problems there are in this fantasy world, it's that they have some sort of hierarchy system or there's a bad guy. And there's a bad guy, there's always going to be a bad guy in a story. You can't tell me that's like the world's entire problem. There's gotta be more problems other than there's a bad guy. As for a hierarchy system, As much as I hate hierarchy systems, that's quite normal and that is to be expected when creating a society. There's going to be a hierarchy system. There's going to be somebody who's at the top and somebody who's at the bottom, regardless of whether you're ranking in skill or occupation or money or just whatever, there's going to be a hierarchy system. You can't tell me that's this fantasy world's problem. They have a hierarchy system. All societies have a hierarchy system. The thing in the Owl House, however, is that they have actual problems. The place is infested with dangerous demons. The place is crawling with monsters that could just pop out out of nowhere. A lot of the inhabitants are pretty rude. And usually people are looking out for themselves only. The only people who seem to be quite well-mannered are the rich and wealthy, but even they can be quite manipulative and will only interact with you if you have something they want. The Boiling Isles is an actually problematic society, kind of like our world. And that's something I really do enjoy because, again, Other fantasy worlds, they just don't have real-life problems. The Boiling Isles, they have problems. They are not a perfect society. They have flaws. And that is something that I really do appreciate about the Owl House because it just makes their world feel so much more realistic. And another point that I really want to discuss is how the magic system works. The Boiling Isles is filled to the brim with witches and monsters, so how could we not have a magic system or magical beings? Something I notice in a lot of fantasy stories is that magic is never really explained. It's sort of like, oh, they're in this world, and magic exists in this world, so they can use magic. 
It's never explained. It's never talked about. It's always just, you know, stated they have magic and that's that. However, this isn't the case with the Boiling Isles. There is a basic magic system, and there even there's an explanation as to how witches can use magic, which is something I rarely encounter in fantasy stories. In episode 4, The Intruder, Ida explains to Luz that witches are born with a sack of magical pus located next to their heart. Through a chemical reaction, witches are able to use magic. Although I'm sure the writers made this the reason just to make fun of the whole magic comes from the heart thing, it's a neat little detail that I really enjoy and one that I think makes their magic system more realistic and logical. This also gives a perfect reason as to why Luce, a human, cannot perform magic like the other witches. In other stories, the human protagonist would be discouraged from practicing magic for a number of weird, nonsensical reasons, such as, oh, you cannot practice magic because you're a human, and no explanation, just the fact that they're a human. However, in Luce's case, there is an actual biological, an actual reason as to why she can't do it. There is an obstacle preventing her from being able to perform magic like everyone else. There is an actual obstacle, not some weird bias. She biologically does not have something that can give her magic. And this is something that I really do love because it's an actual problem, not just some weird bias. I mean, eventually in the show, she does learn about an old method that witches used to use to perform magic, and this method didn't require anything biologically magical, so Luce was able to perform magic. Again, this method doesn't destroy their magic system, it doesn't like create a loophole or anything. It's perfectly logical. It sticks to the world's logic and rules. It is completely consistent and it does not like disrupt anything. The entire magic system is very consistent throughout the show and I feel that more writers should write about magic like this. My final point that I would like to address is about the originality that we see in the Boiling Isles. Most of the demons and creatures we encounter in the Boiling Isles are original and it's something that sadly does not happen often in a fantasy genre. There are many stories where classical creatures are used such as dragons, unicorns, and mermaids. As much as I love these creatures, I also believe that including them in a fantasy world really wastes potential. In fantasy writing, you can imagine anything and it can be possible. You have the chance to create your own world, your own imaginary world that exists somewhere else. So why not use this opportunity to put in really original and never never seen before ideas? So why write about a creature that everyone already knows about when you could write about your own original monster, your own creature that you came up with? This is something that is quite frequent in the Owl House. There are so many monsters and demons that are either completely original or they take the teeniest, the slightest bit of inspiration from the classical creatures. Rather than playing into the stereotypes, the Owl House tries its best to stand out from the other fantasy universes, and in my heart, I believe that it succeeded. The originality, everything from the way witches cast their spells, down to the monsters that we see in the Boiling Isles, it's all so original, and it's very fresh as somebody who reads a lot of fantasy stories and gets tired of seeing the same old cliches repeated over and over again. 
And that concludes everything I wanted to talk about today. I just want to remind you that these are all opinions. These are not facts. And if you have a different opinion, that is completely okay. I really love this series and I really recommend that you watch it as well. There is so much about the Owl House that I did not talk about and I feel that you should experience it for yourself. Anyway, that is all I have for today. Thank you so much for tuning in to this installment of the Whimsical Whispers podcast and we will see you on Saturday. Goodbye.